Welcome back, beautiful tri-state area. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift, we're featuring Dr. David Rankin. He's founder of Aquaplastic Surgery in Jupiter and Miami, Florida, and the chief of plastic surgery at St. Mary's Medical Center, West Palm Beach. Dr. Rankin has been in practice for over 20 years. Recently, he has become well-known in the breast implant illness community. That's BII. Dr. Rankin stopped implanting women and solely focuses on explant procedures. Now, a study published in the Aesthetic Journal in December of 2021 and several other studies have shown that people who reported they had BII often had a significant improvement in their BII symptoms after explanting. Now, as 20-somethings flock to plastic surgeons for chin lipo, lip flips, and breast augmentations, the Food and Drug Administration has a grim warning. The agency issued a safety update regarding breast implants, reporting that the FDA is aware of over 20 cases of potentially deadly squamous cell carcinoma, a type of skin cancer, and various lymphomas in the capsule around the breast implant and in scar tissue. The agency also noted that the cancers are different than the previously reported risk of breast implant-associated anaplastic large cell lymphoma, also called BIA-ALCL. Now, the FDA first released a safety warning in September after more than a dozen medical device reports linked the cancers to the implants. Now, regardless of whether they're saline or silicon, implants can cause joint and muscle pain or weakness, mental health problems, brain fog, fatigue, memory loss, chronic pain, hair loss, rashes, and so much more. The list goes on and on. While some patients' symptoms resolve after removing the implants, others don't find that same relief. Here to chat, breast implant illness, explant, and reconstructive surgery is the amazing Dr. Rankin. Welcome to the show, superstar. Thank you, Zan. Great seeing you again, and thanks for having me on once again. Absolutely. Let's dive right in. So can you share your background and experience in explant breast surgery and addressing breast implant illness? I'm really curious to know, how did you become passionate about this area of plastic surgery? Well, I've been doing plastic and reconstructive surgery for, like you said, about 20 years now. And um, I started off doing a multitude of, of plastic surgical procedures. In the last, I'd say, five years, I've become very focused on explant surgery just because I've been seeing so many patients having problems and through helping them out and watching them recover and, and feel better, it's become a passion of mine just to help patients and help women and to guide them through the whole process. And you're doing a great job at that. I've seen some heartfelt testimonials that trend on social media about women reclaiming their freedom and their lives after uh, they explant with you. So thank you for doing God's work in many respects. What is the most common sign and symptoms of breast implant illness and how do you evaluate patients to determine if they might be experiencing it? Well, oftentimes it's a diagnosis of exclusion. Women have been having health issues for some time. They've been to multiple specialists. They get no answers. They've kind of checked all the other boxes. And um, it, it is in, in some way, shape or form a leap of faith because there's no diagnostic for it. It's really a multitude of symptoms, some more common than others. Some that you mentioned on the introduction to the show, skin issues, joint pain, um, brain fog, anxiety. There is a list. Um, from the FDA, which you mentioned also. You can go online and look at that, fda.com under breast implant illness. But we know that there's a multitude of other symptoms that patients are experiencing. Right. And we know that these symptoms seem to subdue within half a year of the explant. So that leap of faith is pretty spot on, Dr. Rankin. Yeah. Now, now, last year, plastic and cosmetic surgery organizations, um, the Aesthetic Society reported that breast augmentations, lifts, and reductions were up by 48% in 2021, estimating that 365,000 augmentations were performed that year. But with beauty, sometimes, of course, we know comes pain or in this case, breast implant illness and regarded now as a newly investigated phenomenon, Cleveland Clinic is describing BII as a range of symptoms that occur after getting implants. So they keep updating, um, updating the references. Could you describe the different types of breast implant removal procedures 
uh, the potential outcomes and complications associated with them, if any? Well, basically what an explant is, it's removal of the implant, and that's the easy part, but I feel that the capsule surrounding the implant, which is the body's way of walling off a foreign body, should be removed also. Um, there's some controversy on this because the American Board of Plastic Surgery um, did a study which states only a partial capsulectomy is effective, but in my practice, I'm committed to removing it all because it's still, these are early studies and we really, um, we don't want to be left with capsule or scar tissue in four or five years when we discover that this may be one of the leading causes of having symptoms. So I think it's important to remove in every patient and the patients that simply do an explant with no capsule removal, I'm not seeing uh, abatement of symptoms afterward. So this end block surgery is what we're talking about. Is that correct? Well, end block, there's a difference between end block and total capsulectomy. End block means that the whole capsule, right. whole scar tissue comes off in, in one one unit with the implant with no holes or imperfections in it. Um, a total capsulectomy means that the whole capsule comes out. So an end block is a type of, of total capsulectomy. Right. So when we talk about end block surgery, the specialized surgical technique often chosen by individuals who wish to have their breast implants removed to ensure the complete removal of the surrounding scar tissue capsule that forms naturally around the implants. Can you discuss your experience with implant removal and explantation te techniques, including end block removal? Yeah, well, end block is really a term that we're trying to move away from. It's okay. more of a term that's used with, with cancer patients, with patients that do develop some things we talked about, like the ALCL, where you want to get everything in one unit. It becomes more important when an implant is ruptured, when a silicone implant is ruptured, to try and avoid spillage. Um, but really, statistically, the patients do just as well, whether they have a total capsulectomy or an end block in your standard explant surgery. And doing an end block in every single patient can actually be dangerous. Um, it's just important to get the whole capsule out. Interesting. Now, medical professionals advise implants to be refreshed every 10 years to avoid complications, but some patients reportedly haven't needed to wait for nearly that long before symptoms set in, right? So women have previously claimed it felt as if they'd been poisoned, quote unquote, due to their implants, while others reported severe weight gain and, and adult acne even. How do you tailor your approach to explant surgery to meet the individual needs and concerns of each patient? Well, you know, implants, there's a, there's, you know, there's not a standard of when they need to be replaced. So silicone implants, if you ask five plastic surgeons, you may get five different answers on when they should be replaced. Um, back when I used to do implants, which I don't do anymore, I thought every eight years was a safe number to change your silicone implants. Saline implants are different. They can be left in longer if patients are not experiencing any symptoms. As far as when do you do an explant, it's really up to the, the patient and the doctor through a, a thorough discussion and see how they're feeling. Um, see if they're having any symptoms. You know, if someone has saline implants and they're 10 years out, they feel great, they look good, um, and they ask me what to do. Well, those are the patients where you, you, know, you don't have to necessarily remove them at that time. Um, but if they're experiencing symptoms or if they have a leak or a rupture or a capsular contracture, those are the indications for, for surgery. And how do you, uh, when, when you're talking about these um, procedures, how do you collaborate with patients to achieve natural and aesthetically pleasing results after explantation? Is it consulting with them prior? Is it a roadmap? Yeah, every patient's different and outcomes depend on a lot of different factors. So amount of breast tissue is a big one. You know, the more breast tissue a patient has going in, the easier it is to get a more pleasing aesthetic. Size of the implant also, patients with very large implants, it stretches out the skin and the tissues more, so there's more reconstructive work that becomes necessary. Um, through experience, I can kind of get an idea of patient outcomes postoperatively. Um, we can discuss what, you know, what, we, what we expect to achieve with everybody. And what measures do you take to minimize scarring and improve the overall appearance of the chest area post-explantation? Um, it depends because some patients, you know, you can just do an explant with a very small incision in the breast crease and they turn out just fine. But patients with stretched out tissues or breasts that have dropped over time where you want to do a lift, you, you always want to um, get the best possible shape with the least possible scar. And, and, and those two are kind of competing sometimes. So these are discussions to have uh, beforehand also.
So I'm due to explant with you in a few weeks, announcing it to the world. And I can't wait to try CO2 lift carboxy gel post-surgery because after some peer reviews, they found that CO2 lift increased the presence of wound repair factors and growth factors, which help cells turn over faster, reducing the appearance of scars. And carboxy therapy also stimulates collagen and elastin production, which, help, which helps retain hydration and Im improves, of course, elimination of waste, which in turn helps the body heal localized damage such as scars. So I can't wait to be the guinea pig for that one. Yeah, we'll give it a shot. And I've heard some really good things about it. So it'll be, it'll be the first in my practice. So we'll, 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 we'll check it out. I'm all about setting precedents, going where there is no path and leaving a great big trail. Now, are there any advocacy efforts or initiatives you're involved in to raise awareness about breast implant illness and promote patient safety, of course, outside of our platform? You know, I really just try and be uh, an advocate on social media and put forth the experiences that my patients have. They do a lot of um, awesome uh, videos, testimonials, uh, tutorials for post-op care. Um, and I just kind of repost these things and it's become very powerful just online. You're, you don't need any help. You have models, actors, celebrities, athletes, VIPs all lined up uh, with amazing and incredible testimonials to your point and your social media uh, does blow up often and you are tagged all over the place with breast implant illness advocacy, advocacy groups internationally. And I think it's because you have paved the way for yourself in a niche market and many women uh, come to you to find that their health again. So you are doing incredible things. And the oath that you took to solely explant really speaks volumes and says a lot about who you are uh, as a doctor, but also as a human being. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think when women feel better after surgery and it changes their life, they want to share and they want to help other people. And that's really how this thing has really taken off is women helping other women and spreading the word and spreading awareness. Yeah. And it's all about education, 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 education. This is so important. And it's such a trending topic, breast implant illness. The FDA lied. They have been lying for a long time. And now that black box warning is being adjusted uh, since 2021 to include more harsh realities that they all knew. It's just now it's coming to the surface because there's that many reports. And just like everything else in big pharma, you know, you got to do your research. You don't know who to trust. And I certainly wouldn't trust those big guys. So thank you for being who you are, Dr. Rankin, and helping uh, so many women. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for saying that. Absolutely. A vast majority of patients tolerate breast implants just fine. But patients who have ruled out all other possibilities of cause of their symptoms with their primary care physician and specialists, or those who simply wish not to have their implants any longer, can definitely seek out an explant. You definitely need to check out Dr. David Rankin. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2Lift.com. David Rankin is founder of Aquaplastic Surgery in Jupiter, Florida, and the chief of plastic surgery at St. Mary's Medical Center in, in Palm Beach. You can find him directly on his website at David Rankin M d.com or check him out on the gram at david rankin md you're listening to a moment of zen right here on 710 wor the voice of new york iheart radio we'll be right back after this a moment of zen is brought to you by co2 lift as we age our skin loses moisture and elasticity causing wrinkled skin you can reverse this aging process with co2 lift co2 lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift tighten and regenerate your skin this simple painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process you will see reduction in wrinkles increase in luminosity and improve pigmentation sagging skin tone and radiance for more information or to order co2 lift go to co2lift.com 